Welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use elementary row operations to make your life a lot easier in computing the determinant of any matrix. Well, as long as it's not too much work. But so here we have a four by four matrix and ideally um, what you could do manually, the method you would use is to manually compute by doing row expansion because firstly the rule of Sarus does not apply here because it's not a three by three matrix. So typically what you would do is to do cofactor expansion along a row or a column. But there's something that elementary row operations would do to make the work a lot easier. And the work gets a lot easier when you have some zeros, like you have multiple zeros along a column or a row along which you're going to compute the cofactor expansion. Let me just give you a quick example. Let's say I have a three by three determinant I want to compute. It's smart for me to expand along this because all I have to do is to write, oh, that my determinant is going to be, if I expand along this row, along this column, it's going to be one times the determinant of the minor, which is going to be three, one, two, two. And then this is plus, minus, minus, I have zero times the determinant of the minor of this, which is going to be two, four, two, two. It's going to be two, four, two, two. And then the next one is going to be plus zero times um, the minor is going to be two, four, three, one, which is going to be two, four, three, one. So I can compute my cofactors, but this is zero times a number. This is already zero. This also is zero. So the more zeros I have along the path I am going, the easier my work is because this is the only computation I have to do. So my answer here is simply one times the determinant of this two by two matrix, which is six minus two, six minus two. So my answer here is four. So I didn't have to do this work because I already have zeros here. So what will elementary row operations help you do? It will help you, or the operations will help you generate as many zeros along the path you want to go. So it's just smart for you to decide which way is it easiest for me to generate as many zeros. We know there are three elementary row operations. Now of all three, I would recommend that you just consistently use one unless you're stuck and you have to use the other two. Why? Because one of them does not change the determinant. You don't have to do anything. The other two, you will have to make adjustments either to the signs or to the size, the volume. So this is what it means. Let me just highlight all three and the effect they have on computing determinants and then just solve this determinant using just one of them. So let's look at the first one. So elementary row operation. Let's call it one. What does this do? This generates a different matrix, okay? Generates a difference matrix B. Let's say that B is generated by, let's say, multiplying by multiplying a row of A by K. So let's say you have two matrices, A and B, but you created B by multiplying one of the rows here. Let's say you multiplied row one by, say, one third or by two. Now the new matrix you form will have a different determinant. And this is the connection between the old matrix. This is the old matrix this is the new matrix. We know that the determinant of the new matrix, determinant of B, will be equal to K times the determinant of A. That's the only difference. Once you multiply one row by a scalar, then the determinant is also multiplied by a scalar. If you multiply everything here by 5, it means you multiply row one by five, row two by five, row three by five, row four by five, then it means that you're gonna multiply the determinant of the original one. If you wanna get the new, the new determinant, you're gonna multiply it by 
five, four times because there are four rows. It's a four by four determinant. And that's why I would say, don't perform this operation if you're just beginning your determinant computation. So don't do scalar multiple of a row. Okay, unless you want to add it to another row, which is what I recommend. Okay, so the second one is E elementary operation two. And that one just means that you do what I recommend that you do, which is add a multiple of a row of A to another row to form B. So that's what we typically would do, okay? What would say is, hey, I wanna create a zero here. So you say, I'm going to subtract row four from row two, or you're gonna add minus one times this row to this row. You're gonna create a zero here definitely. Now this second one does not change the determinant. Okay, so here we say that the determinant of the new matrix, determinant of B is equal to the determinant of A. That's the second one. And the third one is simple. Whenever you switch rows, you didn't multiply by a scalar, you just switch the rows. Well, remember that the signs alternate. So you go from plus, minus, plus, minus, remember? So because the rows alternate once you switch them, you have to switch the sign of the determinant because you've affected the determinant, okay? So what we're gonna say is for the third one, ERO3, elementary row operation three, what happens here is B is formed by switching two rows of A. Then the determinant of the new matrix B is equal to the negative of the determinant of A. These are the three elementary row operations and these are the consequences of whatever you do. This is my recommendation. Don't use this. Don't use this. It's not necessary. Okay. Um, in some instances, you may be compelled to use it to do something else, but as long as computing det uh, determinants, stick to this because nothing changes. Get as many zeros as possible. You're gonna get a situation like this. You do your um, cofactor expansion and you get your answer. So that's what we're gonna do to this and it's not gonna take long. Just two or three moves and we're good. Okay, let's get into it. Before I continue, I know that there are other methods of computing this determinant, okay? One of them is actually doing many elementary row operations and generating as many zeros as possible be below or above the diagonal so that at the end of the day, you're gonna have an upper triangle, uh, triangular matrix or a lower triangular matrix, and then you just multiply the diagonals and you get your answer straight from that. So you just have to generate, you have to transform all of these into zero. So you have to transform how many things? Six things to zero, that's possible, okay? Sometimes it is the mission. You wanna generate a, an upper or lower triangular matrix and then multiply the diagonals, you're gonna get the answer because it's just the same thing as cofactor expansion. It's just that you just end up with these being the only numbers you're gonna use. That's number one. Number two, there are other methods of computing the determinant of a matrix, but as far as this video is concerned, I wanna talk about you generating as many zeros along a row or a column and then using that to compute your determinant. So now, I'm gonna choose. You have to be smart about this. I'm going to generate as many zeros along the first column. So what I'm going to do is pick the smallest value, especially the one that has one. One is always the safest number because you can do anything with one. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna subtract two of this from this. That means this is gonna become a zero. I'm gonna subtract this from this it means this is gonna become a zero. I'm gonna subtract three of this from this. It means this is gonna become zero. So I'm gonna end up with just one in the beginning here, at the bottom here. So see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say that row one is the same thing as the old row one minus 
three of row four. I'm going to say row two is the old row two minus row four. I'm going to say row three is the old row three minus two row four. And I'm going to leave the, the old row, okay? Watch this. Sorry, it's determinant. So see what I have. I'm going to have, let's do all the calculation because I'm retaining the last row. I'm going to write one, three, two, minus one. Okay. Now this is the determinant I need to compute. With experience, you shouldn't write anything else because you know all of these will give you the zeros. But let's just say we didn't know. We're just going to do cofactor expansion along this column and see what that's going to be. So let's say this was A. So the let's now call this um, B. Let's say this is equal to B. Okay. The determinant of B. Hey. So the determinant of B now will be equal to cofactor expansion. That's going to be zero multiplied by, we're going to have the minors of zero. So nothing from here, nothing from here. So we have this matrix under here. You have one minus one, two minus three, minus three, four, three, two minus one. This, you have to compute the determinant of this matrix and then multiply it by zero. You already know this is going to be zero, all right? Okay, but I just want to write it for the sake of clarity. Now this is plus, minus, minus zero times. You do the same thing. If I take this and this, I'm going to write minus 10. So I know all of these go to zero. I didn't have to write them. I could have known that they're just zeros, okay? So cancel, cancel, cancel. This is the only matrix I need to deal with. Well, this is minus one, so my answer is minus the determinant of this three by three matrix, which I can compute either by cofactor expansion, the rule of Saru's, or I can create zeros again here. Let me try, should I create zeros? Or you can just use the rule of Saru's. Okay, I wanted to make an observation. I saw a comment in the comment section that instead of copying the first two columns, you can actually copy down this way. And I want to show you that it's also valid because remember, you can compute along a column or a row. So let's say I copy the first two rows and I put them down. It becomes, let me write it this way. It becomes minus 10, minus six and six. And I copy one, minus one and two. So I can compute my determinant by multiplying this way, this way, and this way. So I can go this way, this way, and this way. I'll get answers. So if I multiply this way, I'm going to get 40. If I multiply this way, I'm going to get minus 18. If I multiply this way, I'm going to get 36. So this is 40 minus 18, 22. 22 plus 36 is 58. So this is 58 minus, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. This one came this way, so I'm going to go this way. One, two, three, and get my answers. So if I go this way, this is going to be six times, this is going to be 18. If I go this way, this is going to be 60. If I go this way, this is going to be minus 24. Okay, so 18 plus 60 minus 24 is 54. So this is equal to minus 4. And this is the determinant of this matrix. Did I leave anything out? In the next video, I'll fix it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.